Autumn, 2017. In a well-lit room, a man named Yan Mu stood in front of a woman sitting in an armchair. The woman, actively gesticulating, told him to withdraw 100,000 because her brother wants to buy a car. Yan Mu twisted his face in frustration, gritting his teeth. In his hand he was clutching a sheet on which something was written. The man opened his eyes and, looking down, said that he had no money. The woman immediately lost all her composure, jumped up from her seat and began to ask how it happened, why he had no money and where his salary for this month was. She unceremoniously began to put her hands in the man's pockets, reminding him that she had told him to go to some old people and ask them for money. Yan Mu only stood motionless, allowing her to do whatever she wanted. Soon his pockets were turned inside out. They were empty. The woman, without thinking twice, swung and gave the man a slap in the face. She began to scold him again, calling him trash and asking where the money was, where he hid it, and asked him to show it to her immediately. Yan Mu only laughed, saying that it was only about money again. A glass of water that was on the table came in handy here. The woman grabbed him and threw him straight at the man, who, apparently, was stunned by such an outburst. Bouncing off the man's head, the glass fell to the floor and broke, the fragments scattered in different directions. The woman continued to show her dissatisfaction with the fact that Yan Mu, who, in her opinion, was a loser, could also smile in such a situation. A wet Yan Mu stood with his head down. A mark from a recent blow was visible on his cheek. He chuckled and called himself a loser who had no money. It seems that after everything that has happened, his patience has come to an end. Previously calm, now he switched to shouting. He paid for everything, starting with the car in the house of this woman's parents, ending with her brother's wedding. He said that even if he earned 100 million a month, it would still not be enough for her family. The woman asked Yan Mu the amount he had mentioned with displeasure, and then asked if he considered her family, the Fan family, his family too. Is he so selfish that he can't take care of his own family? Yan Mu started laughing again, closing his eyes. Blood was flowing down his face from his head, because a glass glass had previously flown into him. He was amused by this woman's words about family. He shouted that he was already fed up with such relatives, so to hell with them. The woman replied that if Yan Mu was fed up with all this, then he could just die, thereby ending it all. Yan Mu exclaimed that it was a great idea and asked if she really thought he couldn't actually do it. The woman asked if he really wanted to die and said it was a good idea, but he should wait until she bought accident insurance and then his death would pay for itself. Frowning, Yan Mu looked at Fan Yaksu, saying that it was just fine and also noting how cruel she was. The man ran away and, under the loud cry of the woman, rushed to the window. He flew out through it, falling down. Right now, Yan Mu was thinking that the end of his life had come. On the piece of paper that he had been holding in his hand all this time was written the conclusion from the hospital, stomach cancer of the last stage. Beginning of July, 2009. Five people were in the room. Four of them were comfortably seated on the sofa and one was kneeling in front of them. A woman with a short haircut asked why he suddenly knelt down. The blonde guy sitting in the corner of the sofa laughed and remarked that it was probably the tradition of this person's family to kneel after entering the room. Yan Mu was on his knees and wanted to say something, but suddenly realization came to him. He found out what position he was in. He is on his knees in front of these people, but most importantly, he is still alive. The woman folded her arms on her chest, commenting on Yan Mu's words, and also asked him not to make a fool of himself. Yan Mu raised his head and inquiringly addressed this woman, calling her mom. She only asked in response who he called mom here. He has to add 400,000 to the bride price and only after that he will have the right to call her that. Yan Mu was taken aback. Did she say about the ransom? Now he realized that he had gone back eight years. It was then, eight years ago, that he proposed to Fan Yaksu. The woman continued to insist that Yan Mu add 400,000 to the ransom, and there's nothing to think about. Getting up from his knees, Yan Mu resolutely said that he had already thought everything over. Now all his thoughts were about the fact that in his previous life he had fallen into the family of the bloodsucking fan. The guy, smiling, said he agreed. Overjoyed by this news, the woman beamed. Her face immediately began to seem kinder. She asked if he agreed to her condition. However, Yan Mu shouted that he didn't agree to a damn thing. He was thinking that now he could start all over again. So this time he would never make the same mistake that he had made earlier. The woman jumped up from her seat and asked what the brat had just said. Did he really think her daughter wasn't worth a million? Fang Yuxu watched silently, frowning. Yan Mu's face was serious. He asked the woman if she had any problems with hearing or head, and then explained he would not pay a penny for the bride. Now the bride herself, Fang Yuxu, has intervened. She also got up from her seat and started asking how Yan Mu could do this to her and her family. He only asked again, and then decided to find out if she was being married or sold. Fan Yaksu seemed upset and confused. She said that it was not easy for her parents to raise her, so it's worth paying them a bride price. Yan Mu asked what Fan Yaksu herself would give him in this case, a loser brother who only needs money. 
That brother himself was not at all pleased with such words addressed to him. Now he jumped up from his seat in a rage, asking who Yang Mu had just dared to call a loser. Yan Mu was still calm. He indifferently told the guy that he was a complete jerk who could not do anything, verbally sending Yan Mu. The loser brother of the bride threw his fists at the one who had just insulted him. But Yan Mu was no longer going to hit back and swear the same way as before. He skillfully dodged the impending blow, grabbed the guy by the head, leaning him against the floor with it. The mother of the family screamed, calling Yan Ma a bastard, and told him to immediately let Sayo Yu go, because he is his brother, a family member. Yan Mu asked again, a family member? There has not been a wedding yet, which means that Sayo Yu is not his brother and is not a member of his family. The guy stood up and firmly stated that from now on he did not want to have anything to do with the Fan family. Fan Yaksu turned to Yan Mu, asking him if their relationship was worth the money. The guy asked if she had ever thought about how hard his parents had to work to earn 500,000. In his previous life, for the sake of money for ransom, his father despaired and bought a lottery ticket and unexpectedly won 500,000, and then got a nervous breakdown because of this money. The last thing he said when he left this family was that they needed the cash cow, not him. Already on the street, Yan Mu approached the building where there was a signed social security lottery. The text of the ad he was reading read, The first prize fund of the Shuang Zhu Ju lottery totals 100 million yuan. He thought it was a very good start for the lottery. He also thought that at that time, the first prize and his father's number were one number and 100 million yuan. For various reasons, this series of numbers was too deeply imprinted in his memory. Yan Mu went inside to buy one lottery ticket. The man at the checkout, handing the ticket to the guy, said that the Shuang Ju lottery draw would be held tonight at 9.50. On the street, Yan Mu suddenly saw his father walking nearby. His father, rubbing his eyes, asked himself, Did he see Zio Mu just now? Didn't he go to the fan family today? Maybe it just seemed. Yan Mu was watching his father. It was lunchtime now. The guy assumed that his father had had a bad lunch again. He watched the old man sadly from around the corner. The father, passing by, said that if he won, he would not have to worry about the bride price for his son. He hoped for God's help and believed that this time he must be lucky. Yan Mu decided that from that day on, he would not let his father and mother suffer anymore. Suddenly Yan Mu received some kind of congratulatory notification. Harnch was congratulated on the successful binding of the system of the God of the Eyes of the Moon. The beginner's task is to get 100 million assets and own his own company. The task completion time is limited to 24 hours. There are 21 hours left before the end of the task. The system asked to take this task seriously. Otherwise Yan Mu's life would be lost. In total, he had one point of life. Confused, Yan Mu did not understand what was going on and what it was. Already at home, Yan Mu was talking about what had happened. This system said that he had only 21 hours left to live. Is this really a joke? He's just been reborn. On his arm was now the same mark, the eye of the moon. Suddenly, Yan Mu heard someone's voice. Its owner was asking what was going on and demanding someone to take their hands off. Yan Mu recognized the person to whom this voice belonged and was surprised. Is it really Meng Yao? The scream came again. Yan Mu rushed to help, shouting and asking what happened. Memories came flooding back. A boy and a girl were playing together. A boy was rocking a swing on which a girl was sitting. He and Meng Yao have been friends since childhood. She has always been like a younger sister to him. In a previous life, Meng Yao's mom lost 500,000 at Mahjong and Meng Yao temporarily lived in his family. Then he was at Fan's house and did not answer Meng Yao's call. Then Yan Mu found out that they were unable to pay the debt and were killed by creditors. He even went to their graves. However, in this life, he just has to protect her. At this time, two guys molested the girl. One of them pressed her against the wall, blocking her hands above her head with one hand and touching her body under her t-shirt with the other, and told her to keep screaming because he didn't mind looking at someone who would come to save her. The second bandit, who had the girl's phone in his hands, asked who she wanted to call. Yan Mu, who had already run outside, now got into a fight with the guys who were molesting Meng Yao. He hit one of them, he flew straight into his partner, who even dropped the phone. Meng Yao, with tears in her eyes, rushed into the arms of her savior, who excitedly asked if she was okay. The guy who got slapped in the face was holding his nose and seemed furious. He was unhappy that some son of a bitch dared to hit him. The second guy was coming from behind, believing that Yan Mu was completely tired of living, and intending to beat him with his Wu Jai of the Celestial. Frightened, Mei Yao looked at the bandit and warned Yan Mu about the danger, asking him to be careful. Yan Mu reacted quickly. He turned around, grabbing and twisting the attacker's arm, who was screaming in pain and begging to be released. According to Yan Mu, these guys are just kung fu amateurs, how dare they even use Wu Jai? The guy who had been slapped in the face before stood there and was angry that Yan Mu dared to hit his brother, now he intended to kill him for it. A knife blade glittered in his hand. Yan Mu stood blocking the girl, 
and then clarified the intentions of these bandits, asking if they had come for money. If this is the case, then, according to him, they will never get anything if they take even a step towards Yan Mu and Meng Yao. One of the guys immediately asked if Yan Mu had any money. Another turned to his brother, saying that the guy in front of them is at first glance a poor man, but their boss is still in desperate need of money. Brandishing a knife, the blonde man asked if Yan Mu knew how much money they owed. After that, he immediately named this amount, half a million. Does Yan Mu have that kind of money? Yan Mu raised his hand up, showing three fingers. He said he only needed three days, and he guaranteed them half a million. The blonde man said that it was fine, but he ordered to include his brother's medical bills in this amount. That is, another 100,000. His brother was standing behind him at the time, holding his injured hand during the fight. The blonde man kept talking. His face darkened. He did not warn that if there was no money by the agreed deadline, he would force this girl to repay her debt. With these words, he stretched out his hand, guessing at Meng Yao with his finger. Yan Mu, putting his hand on the girl's shoulder, resolutely said that in three days he would bring money, but the guys would have to beg for forgiveness on their knees in front of her. Leaving, the guy shouted that their boss is the director of the real estate company Fuda. If Yan Mu does not bring money, the boss will personally tear off his legs. The notification from the system came again. In this task, the key phrase is the real estate company of food. There are 20 hours left until the end of the mission, because the system asked to complete the mission as soon as possible. It was also said that the life of the wearer is associated with survival points. If the current value of survival points is extremely small, the wearer's body will randomly experience adverse symptoms. Yan Mu still only had one life point. Yan Mu's thoughts were now occupied by the food real estate company. If he wasn't mistaken, this is the real estate company that went bankrupt. He was also worried that his life was now determined by life points. It was too unclear, because these are just virtual glasses. Meng Yao, who was standing next to him, turned to the guy, saying that it was all her fault. These bandits could find her everywhere she went, and now she also dragged him into it. Yan Mu kindly stroked the girl's head, trying to calm her down. He told her not to worry, because money is not a problem. In three days he will make sure that they apologize to her. He noticed that she was too excited right now, so she should go home. Suddenly the guy's condition worsened. He realized that something was wrong, but did not understand why. He felt dizzy abruptly. He touched her with one hand, closing his eyes and trying to recover. Worried, Meng Yao asked Yan Mu about his well-being. Is he feeling unwell? She was surprised when the guy fell right on top of her. Yan Mu was confused and mentally cursed because of what had happened, because now Meng Yao was lying on the floor and he himself, resting his hands on the floor on her sides, was hanging over her, stammering with excitement. Meng Yao turned to the guy, asking if he was ill. After that, Yan Mu began to explain. He didn't do it on purpose. He assumed that he was a little weak because he hadn't eaten at all during the day. The girl, turning her head to the side, convinced the guy that everything was fine and was going to bring him something to eat. Yan Mu realized that these were the random symptoms mentioned in the notification. He looked at the hand with the mark and thought that it seems that this system completely controls his life. The actions are transferred to the fan house. The whole family was there. They were sitting on the couch, discussing something. The mother asked Fang Yaoxu how things were going and whether Meng Yao had answered her call. The girl shook her head, saying that he still hadn't answered. The father of the family jumped up from the sofa, swinging his hand at his daughter. He scolded her, calling her a useless creature that can't even control a man. What was the use of raising her? The mother barely held her daughter by the shoulders, as if protecting her from an angry husband. She asked where he was in such a hurry. In her opinion, Yan Mu was not himself today. The man thought, touching his chin with his hand. And really, it's so strange, because Yan Mu usually obeyed Zio Zhu, what could suddenly change? Suddenly, both parents asked if it could be that Yan Mu got rich. The man grabbed his daughter by the hand and said that she should keep Yan Mu for the sake of her own happiness, because another girl could take him away at any moment. The man himself was now thinking only that if Yan Mu really became rich, then they would raise the price for the bride price and all his money would belong to them. The mother supported the father, advising the daughter to remember how Yan Mu hit Zio Yu and how he spoke to him. The daughter agreed, saying that, in that case, she needed to go. As she left, the girl sadly thought that Yan Mu was probably hiding something from her, since he would never have done this to her before. Meng Yao was sitting at a table with plates of food on it. Yan Mu held out another plate, offering the girl to eat more fruit. Suddenly someone rang the bell. The girl got up from the table, intending to open the door to the guest. Fan Yaoxu was standing on the threshold. She went inside and started talking to Yan Mu, demanding that he explain himself for everything. He turned in the direction of the girl, and then indifferently asked what she was doing here. He explained that they no longer had anything in common, hadn't he made that clear? He asked if her sycophant mother still hadn't given up. These words brought the girl into a stupor. Immediately, she started saying that everything was wrong, 
and pointing at Yan Mu with her finger asked if he was dating someone else. Did he change his mind when his parents raised the bride price? Yan Mu exhaled, closing his eyes. He replied that it was not so. It was just that there was nothing more between them. Taking into account that they had been dating for so long, Yan Mu decided to give the girl one piece of advice. She should leave her home as soon as possible. Perhaps then she will still be able to live freely. As she left, Fang Yaoxu cursed and insulted Yan Mu, saying that she would make him regret what had happened. Meng Yao looked at her brother with concern. She wanted to ask him about what happened between him and Fang Yaoxu. She thought that Meng Yao and Fang Yaoxu loved each other, so she didn't understand why this suddenly happened. An Mu did not comment on the situation that had just happened here. He was about to leave, saying that he might not be back today. He allowed the girl to stay here for the night. The guy himself was now thinking that he could not tell her that the relationship that lasted for so many years was forgotten. He was going to go out and see what business opportunities there were. Yan Mu went out into the fresh air. Now he was on the street of Jiangcheng City and looked at the crowd gathered in one place. From people's conversations, it was clear that some person there was the owner of the third prize fund of this stage of the Shang Ju lottery. It was discovered that there is only one digit difference between the third and first prize number. This person must be sorry. Yan Mu was thinking that his father might have also come to cash out his prize. The gray-haired man who was Yan Mu's father stammered that he just wanted his son to buy a house and get married. Later, hiding behind the newspaper, Yan Mu thought that. Fortunately, he stayed in the lottery building and finished cashing the prize much earlier, and he would have less problems with this group of reporters. Yan Mu was standing under a street lamp, leaning against a pole, and reading his newspaper. The system should allow him to buy a food real estate company. The headline of the newspaper he was reading read, The food real estate company is facing bankruptcy. What is the future of real estate? However, Yan Mu decided that the food real estate company was indeed the most convenient enterprise to invest in. Now no one is optimistic about food, and who would have thought that Zhang Cheng's largest business would be here in the future? If Yan Mu buys out the food company, he will become the richest man in Zhang Cheng in a few years. He decided that it was on this basis that he would start his business. Here was his chance to earn a lot of money. At 9.20 am, Yan Mu was standing in front of the food real estate task and wondered why there were still so many people here if the food company went bankrupt. Did someone beat him to it? The notification from the system came again. There was only one hour left before the deadline for completing the task, because it had to be completed as quickly as possible, otherwise Yan Mu would lose his life. The system also warned, as before, there were invariably few life points, because the host's body would have random adverse symptoms. Yan Mu felt pain and squeezed the place where he was hurting with his hand. It was a heart. If he didn't have to go to the bank to cash out his winnings, he wouldn't have spent an hour or so doing it. Workers who passed by shouted, asking to give way to them, as they carried a banner. Yan Mu asked the men what it was. The man in the helmet explained that the workers were on strike because their wages had been delayed for almost six months. Yan Mu thought that this was a common situation when builders' wages were delayed, which is why there was such a fuss. The second man said that they had heard that the head director had run away with all the money, and the second director, Kun Rui, was in debt like silk. There is no money to pay wages at all, so now everyone is demanding explanations and at least some money. Yan Mu was amazed by what he heard. He asked if the head director had definitely escaped. The worker replied that this information came directly from the company. This Kun Rui, according to him, should arrive today, so the workers are blocking everything here. Yan Mu thanked the men, heading to where there were even more people. There was less than an hour left, but he still had a chance. After being reborn, Yan Mu didn't want to die so soon, he desperately wanted to live. A car pulled up. People shouted from the crowd, turned to Kun Rui and demanded to return the money. The banner had the same requirement. The unscrupulous boss was demanded to return the money earned with sweat and blood. People did not want to let him leave until he returned the money. He had to pay wages and migrant workers. The man who was sitting in the car was only angry at people, calling them smelly peasants and a pack of rabid dogs. In his opinion, they are probably completely tired of living. That swearing man was Lai Bio, Kun Rui's bodyguard. He was 35 years old. Kun Rui himself, the chief director of the food company, who was 40 years old, sat in silence. Lai Bio turned to the director, asking why not contact some people. These hillbillies gathered near the company are just a colossus on clay feet. They will lose their strength if they are taught a good lesson. Kun Rui asked what was the use of it. There are hundreds of people outside. Will he hire hundreds of people who will be ready to fight against them? Will he, Lai Bio, bear responsibility for the dead and wounded? Suddenly someone knocked on the window. It was Yan Mu. Even Lai Bio was scared and cursed when he saw the face of the guy who was looking at them through this glass. Yan Mu received the time alert again. There were only 25 minutes left until the end of the task. In a moment, Yan Mu was already inside the car. The bodyguard tried to move away from him, asking who let him in here, and told him to get out of here. 
The guy did not answer the bodyguard, but immediately got to the point, turning to Director Kun and saying that he had business with him. Lai Bio was completely furious, because the boy seemed not to have heard that he was told to get out. Now he repeated those words again and threatened, grabbing Yan Mu by the clothes to have some success. Yan Mu wasn't scared at all, he just kept bending his line. He said that what he says now will affect whether Mr. Kuhn will spend the rest of his life in prison or not. After these words, he asked again if they were sure that they wanted Yan Mu to come out. Dai Bio cursed, saying that Yan Mu is the same as those people on the street who ask for money. Then Kun Rui suddenly spoke up. He said that he also did not like the fact that wages were delayed, so he had already figured out how to pay everything. He warned that if Yan Mu demanded something now, it wouldn't work. Yan Mu hastened to tell the true reason for his appearance, because he is not here to ask for money. On the contrary, he is here to give money to Mr. Kun. Kun Rui was stunned. He immediately took off his sunglasses. His eyes were full of misunderstanding. He asked what it meant. Yan Mu explained. This means that he will help the director to recover all his financial losses, including salary arrears. Yan Mu will buy out the food real estate company and become its director. Kun Rui asked the young man if he knew how much the economic damage from this project is, not to mention the acquisition. The payment of wages for workers alone will be cosmic. Yan Mu closed his eyes with displeasure, saying that he could not spend so much time with them, so he suggested that the director simply name the amount. The notification came from the system again. There were only 10 minutes left until the end of the task. Adjusting his glasses, Kun Rui said that if a guy doesn't have 50 million, then he shouldn't even think about buying out the food company. Yan Mu repeated the amount, which seemed to him quite small. Enraged, Kun Rui saw this as a mockery and in a rage shouted that he was teasing him, after which he turned to Lai Bio, telling him to throw the boy out of the car. Lai Bio grabbed Yan Mu's clothes with renewed vigor, asking what he was building up here and did he really think that these were all toys. Yan Mu did not tolerate it and quickly calmed down the bodyguard, pinning him to the seat. The man's face twisted, and he cursed again. Kun Rui looked at how this kid was dressed. He could not even think that he was rich and possessed martial arts, but he was able to defeat Lai Bio. It was surprising. Director Kun put his hand on the shoulder of the bodyguard who was trying to fight the guy and asked him to wait. Kun Rui told the guy that right now he doesn't have the money to give out wages to workers, and he doesn't have time to mess with him for a long time. He asked not to blame him for not being polite, since Yan Mu wants to buy his company. Yan Mu asked the man not to worry, because he will take this piece of land, even if it costs 50 million. He is even willing to pay for it right now. Yan Mu was thinking that the news had already said that Kun Rui had several plots of land in the area. If he got his hands on everything now, it would be fashionable to double the profits in the future. Yan Mu said he was also willing to buy all the land that belongs to Director Kun. Now Kun Rui was completely stunned. He asked if the guy was joking, talking about this, and he thought that if he succumbed to emotion, he could lose all the plots of land. But if this guy really could buy everything, then it would be a great relief. Yan Mu looked at the interlocutor with a serious look, asking if he looked like someone who was joking in this situation. He asked me to set a price without further ado. There were only five minutes left until the end of the task. Kun Rui asked again if the man's intentions and words were serious. Lai Bio thought that this guy didn't know that the price of land in this area was very high, but he was still willing to buy it at a high price. It seemed absolutely crazy. The system message came again, stating that there are only three minutes left until the end of the task. The five senses of the carrier would disappear due to the fine imposed. If the task was not completed, the carrier would die. Holding his head, Yan Mu asked what decision Director Kun had made. It was obvious that the guy was in a bad condition. Yan Mu no longer cared about death, to hell with it. Kun Ria has huge debts, and oh can't wait to get out of them. So Yan Mu felt that he simply had to buy out the real estate company of Fuda. Showing two fingers, Kun Rui said about 20 million. If only Yan Mu can find 20 million, Kun Rui will immediately hand over this plot of land to him. Yan Mu held his head. He no longer heard what Kun Rui said. He was scared, because his hearing was disappearing. Yan Mu tried to hold on with all his might. He agreed to the condition and asked to proceed to the registration, explaining that he was in a hurry. Judging by Director Kun's lips and gestures, Yan Mu has already concluded that he said about 20 million. Kun Rui told his bodyguard to settle all the formalities with Mr. Yan. There are 10 seconds left until the end of the task. The host's life force was slowly being depleted. His sight, as well as his hearing, was disappearing. He was thinking that there was too little time left, so he had to have time to sign this contract. The countdown was already on. Yan Mu could hardly see anything. After that, a credit card appeared in his hand, with which he had to pay for the purchase. Kun Rui looked with a sinking heart at this moment at everything that was happening. 5 seconds, 4 seconds, successfully paid, 3 seconds, the countdown has stopped. Exhausted, Yan Mu sat and thought that the system did not say that the time had expired, which meant that he had made it. 
Kun Rui sat smiling and pleased. He looked at the daddy who had just bought his land. For some reason, Anmu still felt that his strength was leaving him. His life has just begun. How can he die again? A message has come from the system. It was a congratulation of the carrier on the successful completion of the starting task. And awards were also received for passing, including 10 life points, 3 additional bonus survival points. And the first level of the trading system was unlocked. Yan Mu now had 13 life points. The guy breathed a sigh of relief, got carried away. From the message from the system, Yan Mu learned that life points are awarded depending on the carrier's income, investments and rewards for completing system tasks. Depending on the current state of the carrier, survival costs 1 life point per day. The more life points, the better the carrier's health, and life points can also be used to buy items. In the system store, someone was shouting outside. The man said that if they didn't get paid today, then no one would go anywhere. A brick from a disgruntled man flew straight into the car window, which horrified Mr. Kun. People weren't going to let him go, because then they just wouldn't be able to find him. Worried, Lai Bio, who was already sitting in the seat next to the driver, turned to the boss and asked if he was okay. He asked what he should do next, and again offered to contact people who can come and get rid of people who make Kun uncomfortable. Kun Rui turned to Yan Mu, asking if he could see what was happening. Yan Mu said that since the money had already arrived, Kun Rui could just send the workers' wages directly. He was adjusting his tie, thinking about how his body was slowly recovering. Now he has only 13 life points, which means that he has 13 days left. Yan Mu did not know when the next system task would be, so he considered it necessary to find a way to get life points on his own. Kun Rui told Lai Bio to do as Yan Mu said. That is, to tell the people outside that the money would be transferred to them tonight. Lai Bio, after listening, made it clear that everything was very clear to him. After the instructions, he opened the hatch on the roof of the car and leaned out of it with a loudspeaker in his hand. He called everyone to attention and advised them to go home, passing on the words of the boss that everyone would be transferred their wages in the evening. The workers began to whisper among themselves, Is it true that tonight they will pay all the unpaid money, the payment of which was delayed for six months? Someone decided that it was worth giving the management one last chance, because it still won't be able to avoid it. It was decided to disperse and return in the evening in case of fraud. Lai Bio told the boss that everyone had left, and now he was waiting for him to take further action. What will they do now? Kun Rui said that first we need to go back to the office and invite Mr. Yang to see the plans. So they arrived at the building of the food real estate company. Already inside, Yan Mu was standing next to a huge map of Jiangcheng City that hung on the wall. Kun Rui walked up to him, holding out their planning book. Yan Mu said he didn't need this planning book. He circled some territories on the map with a marker, pointed to one, saying that it should not be empty, because there is no need to build buildings and move something on it. He also indicated the plots of land that need to be bought. After that, he circled another territory. This caused a strange reaction from Kun Ruya, who said that this piece of land in the east of the city is too remote, besides it is in desolation. Although it is cheap, according to Kun, it has no practical value. Roughly speaking, no one even needs this piece of land for free. Yan Mu said that this should not worry the man, he should listen to what he is told. Yan Mu knew that there would be several new schools near this land in the east, and it would be great to build a commercial zone there. Yan Mu said that when they buy this land, it is necessary to build a large shopping center, specialty restaurants, a snack bar, a bookstore and build a hotel there as soon as possible. Finishing, according to him, should be of a new model so that the buildings look stylish. Kun Rui was left with the task of finding a construction team, while he should focus on reliability and quality. The man replied that Mr. Yang could be calm, because he, Kun Rui, would take care of it. Patting the man on the shoulder, the new boss told him to do what he told him, and then he would not treat him badly. Kun Rui just has to trust his decisions. Kun Rui informed Mr. Yang that a meeting on investment issues will be held at the Jingpeng Hotel tonight, where, according to rumors, there will be many interesting projects. He said he could escort Yan Mu there if he was interested in it. Yan Mu asked again about the investment meeting. He thought about the fact that life points are awarded from his income and investments. If he can successfully invest, he will be able to get a lot of life points in this way. In the evening, Yan Mu arrived at the Jingpeng Hotel. At the reception desk, he was interested in which floor the investment meeting was taking place today. A girl was standing not far behind him. It was Mrs. Fan. Yan Mu didn't even turn around in her direction, only mentally asking himself the question of what she was doing here. Now she was standing, modestly shrinking. And some man, putting his hand on her shoulder, said that he had last seen her three months ago and did not expect that she would become even more beautiful than before. The girl was silent and thought that if Yan Mu had just given the bride price to her parents, she would not have had to entertain this stinking man. The man pulled her even closer to him, asking how she could think about something when he was here. He asked to be allowed to help her. Suddenly something else caught the girl's attention. 
Yanmu silently looked in her direction, slightly furrowing his eyebrows. It seemed that Fang Yaoxu felt uncomfortable. She looked away and looked like she was sad. The man standing next to her wondered if it could be that she and this guy were old acquaintances. Yan Mu thought that he had broken up with her just a few days ago, and she had already dressed so openly and was accompanying another man. He soon decided that it was none of his business. Two men bumped into each other with their shoulders as they passed by. Yan Mu turned towards the man who was with Fan Yaoxu and asked what he was doing. The man, crossing his arms over his chest, complacently replied that the guy was standing in the middle of the road and thereby blocking the way to other people. The girl stood silently by, looking in the other direction. After that, the man began to poke Yan Mu with his finger, asking if he knew what kind of place it was, and then explaining that this place was not for poor boys like him. Yan Mu simply ignored his words, turning to Fang Yaoxu already. He asked her if she had chosen what to wear today. The ignored man went berserk, asking how dare this guy ignore him without even knowing who he is. He also asked how dare Yan Mu indulge someone else's girlfriend right in front of him. Yan Mu again seemed not to notice this man. He only talked to the girl this time asking what her relationship with this man was. Fan Yaksu took her companion's arm, telling Yan Mu that it was none of his business. The man was pleased with this arrangement. He asked Yan Mu if he had heard what the girl had told him, and added that the guy could only dream of such a beauty. Yan Mu thought that Fan Yaksu was originally a simple and kind girl, but now he realized that he was wrong about her. Looking at the back of the two retreating figures, Yan Mu, clenching his fists tightly, decided that it didn't matter. They broke up, and their relationship was already in the past. An investment meeting was taking place on the 14th floor of the hotel, where Yan Mu was going now. The system task has arrived, for which the carrier can get 10 life points. The assignment was that Yan Mu had to sign a business investment contract. It's not easy to sign a business contract. So Kun Rui found out everything beforehand. A few businesses that had skyrocketed in Yan Mu's past life would definitely be in his pocket. Just as Yan Mu wanted to enter, the guard at the entrance asked where the guy was in such a hurry and if he knew what kind of place it was. Outsiders are not allowed to enter here. Yan Mu was, of course, aware that this was an investment meeting. The guard was still talking. He asked if the guy knew who all those people were inside. He said that they were all rich and quite high ranking, so he was not sure that Yan Mu could enter there. Yan Mu angrily stated that he was also going to invest in the business. However, the guard did not let up. He asked what kind of boss Yan Mu was going to impersonate by dressing like this. For the head of the cleaners, the man said that there is no cleaning service here, and therefore the guy should go back to his business and not create problems. Yan Mu thought about it. Are investors judged by their clothes? Suddenly, the guard greeted someone who was walking behind Yan Mu. It was Mr. Ma, the same man who came here with Fan Yaoxu. He saw Yan Mu and recognized him as the kid he had encountered on the first floor. The man turned to the guard, asking if he couldn't get this guy out with a couple of phrases. The guard, chuckling, replied that it was true, he did not know where this guy came from. But it seemed to him that he did not understand when talking to him in a human way. The guard reported that Yan Mu even said that he was going to invest, although it was hard to believe. Mr. Ma laughed at this idea. He turned to Yan Mu, asking if he was really going to invest, having only a firm character. He advised the guy to go and earn some money for a decent suit, and also told him not to bother people's eyes here. Mr. Ma put his hand on the guy's shoulder and said that impudence is good, but, for example, in courting a girl, and not in such places, hugging his companion, who clearly felt uncomfortable. Mr. Ma said that just being arrogant is not enough, you also need to have money. He asked Yan Mu if he wanted the same. Yan Mu just waved him off and walked towards the entrance again. The guard stretched out his hand, blocking his way, asking if he didn't understand that he was not allowed to enter and what was wrong with him. Suddenly Mr. Ma saw someone on the side. It was Kun Rui, who also came here and whom Ma had not seen for a long time. Taking advantage of the moment when the man was distracted, Yan Mu asked the girl if she was doing it just for money. She only replied that it was none of his business. However, the guy continued, Is it really only money that matters to her and for the sake of it she will follow anyone? He asked if it was worth dressing like that and selling your body for them. Fan Yaksu didn't answer. Yan Mu gave up and turned away. Meanwhile, Mr. Ma was telling Brother Kun that he had heard rumors that a noble person had bought the food company. He had not only paid off his debts, but the company's business was going uphill. He congratulated Kun Rui on this. Kun Rui said that all this was true and he was very lucky. He was so worried about unpaid payments that he could not sleep and did not expect such a turn of events at all. Afterward, he asked how Mr. Ma himself was doing. Closing his eyes, Mr. Ma bitterly reported that things had not been going very well for his entire company lately. He was as unlucky as Brother Kun. Afterward, Mr. Ma told Kun that they had always had a good relationship, so he asked him to help and introduce him to this noble man. At this time, Yan Mu was still dealing with the guard.
Hun Rui had already seen his boss, so he didn't even respond to Mr. Ma's words. He just said President Yan's name out loud. Kun Rui told Mr. Ma that he had things to do, so they would talk next time. The man went to the president, calling him again. Mr. Ma stood in shock, mentally asking himself what Kun Rui had just called that guy. President Yan, Fan Yaksu, who had been standing in silence all this time, heard the men talking and thought that Yan Mu was just a small employee with mediocre indicators. So how could he make the big boss address himself in this way? Mr. Ma called out to Kun Rui, who was about to leave, and asked if he was confused that one. How can he call this yellow-haired boy president? Kun Rui replied that you can't judge a book by its cover because President Yan is now the head of the real estate company Food. Mr. Ma seemed horrified. He asked again if this guy was exactly the same person who bought his company. Kun Rui responded positively, confirming that Yan Mu is the new president of their company. Mr. Ma immediately changed his face, began apologizing to the president and asking him not to take his words to heart. He justified himself by saying that he really did not know what the position of this person was and said that a high-ranking person should forgive the mistakes of those people below him. He asked President Yan not to be angry about what had happened. However, Mr. Ma was again only ignored. Yan Mu, not paying any attention to this man, told Kun Rui that they should not waste time, they should go inside as soon as possible, to where the investment meeting is taking place. But Mr. Ma did not let up. He began to say that the whole situation that happened today was completely his fault. So if Yan Mu needs to do something, then he can just say directly. The man promised that he would definitely do everything. He also wanted to express his apologies by treating President Yan after the investment meeting. Now Yan Mu looked at the man, clarifying his name, Ma Dong. He excitedly confirmed it. After that, Yan Mu indifferently told the man to get out of here and walked past, left behind. Ma Dong looked at the retreating figures of people with displeasure and was angry. He thought this guy was too arrogant because he considers himself so important with a few penny. Ma Dong thought that Yan Mu would see what he was capable of. Finally, Yan Mu entered the place where the investors meeting was being held. Kun Rui asked if the president has any specific goal that he wants to achieve at this meeting. Yan Mu replied that while there is no such goal, they should look at everything first. The first few companies Yan Mu thought about had already recruited the right number of people, so he thought he didn't have much chance. Suddenly, he saw the place of Zing Yun Corporation. He didn't expect to meet the leading internet enterprise from his past life here. However, now it is still a small company that no one is interested in, which is quite surprising. Some guy approached Yan Mu, saying that their Zingyun Corporation is mainly engaged in internet products and wireless routers. He held out his business card. Zhang Peng Yu, the founder of the company himself, bowed out to attract investors. Yan Mu thought that it seemed that this man's success was not groundless. Kun Rui stood next to him and explained to the president that routers are something that used to be manufactured abroad, and probably they don't have a big market inside the country. Some gray-haired man with glasses, rubbing his chin with his hand, said that it was true, routers were very advanced now and therefore domestic manufacturers could not afford them, and with such capital they could not invest in computer equipment. The man who was standing next to the man with glasses said that everything is absolutely true. Currently the internet is not very expensive. If people can use it without a router, then what is the point of paying for it at all? Zhang Peng Yu began to answer them that he knew that they were not too optimistic about the prospects of routers, but asked them to just believe him. Now it is only the early stage of the internet era. In a few years the wireless network will quickly capture the market. He believed that routers will definitely become very popular. People said that it would only be stupider to invest money in a product with such unclear prospects. Talked about Zing Yun that such a small enterprise was too unskilled, and wondered how it got here in the first place. But there was a person who still showed a desire to invest in Zing Yun. He said in plain text that he would invest. That would be Yan Mu. He held Zhang Peng Yu's business card in his hands and said that he would invest 15 million in his company. Kun Rui was scared. He believed that the president had too hastily made the decision to invest there, so he suggested that he think about it all again. As if Zhang Peng Yu couldn't believe his ears, he asked the president if he was really going to invest 15 million in their company. In confirmation, Yan Mu nodded his head and said that everything was really like that. He added that he was very optimistic about Zing Yun's company. Yan Mu also added that although Zing Yun Corporation is not showing itself properly now, but it will definitely happen in the future along with the development of the internet. He said that he believes that the Zing Yun Corporation has a bright future ahead of it. Zhang Peng Yu exclaimed that the president was absolutely right. However, someone in the crowd did not agree with the man at all. It was Ma Dong, pushing through the crowd. He was walking forward, telling people not to listen to this man. Because all this is complete nonsense. He doesn't know anything, but only brags, for the first time here. And already he's turning up his nose like that. People started asking if Mr. Ma knew this person. Ma Dong laughed and said that as soon as you hear the name of this person, 
you start to feel that your ears are dirty. He said that this piece of shit is not worthy of his acquaintance. Kun Rui was angry. He told Ma Dong that he didn't want to talk too much because they were all colleagues, but strongly advised him not to talk nonsense. Ma Dong, as if remembering something, said that he would not have remembered something if Kun Rui had not reminded him. Mr. Ma, pointing at Kun, started yelling that everyone knows that he belongs to the Longton Company, that he got into big debts and intentionally owed wages to employees, and he also wanted to take a subsidiary company to cash out its money, take it away, and then leave Zhongcheng. People began to exclaim, wondering how this was even possible. They thought that Kun Rui and Yan Mu were probably the same field of berries, so Yan Mu had not gone far. Ma Dong said that if Kun Rui had been smarter, he wouldn't have become this man's hound dog. Kun Rui completely lost his temper with anger, but Yan Mu, holding his shoulder, did not let him attack another man. Yan Mu turned to Ma Dong, asking if he was sure that he did not have 15 million. Embittered, Ma Dong blurted out that he was always sure he was right, especially in front of such a piece of shit as Yan Mu. Ma Dong had never heard of a rich guy named Yan Mu and that he allegedly bought a real estate campaign of food. Now he was wondering how much money this man had left. Yan Mu, in this case, offered the man to make a bet with him. He decided to bet that he could invest 15 million in Zing Yun right now. He bet the entire food company on this bet. The self-confident Ma Dong said that Yan Mu definitely does not have the money to invest in Zing Yun, because he will definitely lose this bet. Yan Mu said that Mr. Ma was cool, but made a condition that if he lost, he would have to kneel down, admit his mistake in front of Yan Mu in public and give himself three slaps in the face. He also added that he had already said everything about the food company, so if he loses, he will be ready to do everything the same as Ma Dong. Ma Dong was sure that Yan Mu didn't have the money to invest in Zing Yun Corporation, but he thought that there was always a chance of losing in everything. He was worried that his authority and reputation might suffer. Yan Mu was calm. He noticed the agitation and indecision of Ma Dong, who had previously so vehemently accused him, and asked if he was afraid of losing. Suddenly someone's voice was heard. The person who owned it told Mr. Ma that everyone had been waiting here for half a day to see a good show, so he just can't spoil everyone's fun in a split second. Ma Dong turned his head towards the person who had just spoken to him. It was Tang Ning, the young lord of the Tang family, the largest family in Zhongcheng City. Ma Dong, seeing young master Tang, immediately asked what brought him here. Yan Mu was familiar with this man's name. Tang Ning, the head of the Tang family in Zhongcheng City. The source materials for the Zing Yun Corporation were bought from the Tang family in a past life. If Yan Mu can get to know this person, it will be useful for Zing Yun in the future. Tang Ning told the guys to continue and not pay any attention to him. Ma Dong immediately said that everything that was happening was just a joke. They were just having fun and did not plan to put anything on the line. And they made Tang Ning think that something was going on here. Tang Ning frowned all over, which told Ma Dong that there was no interest. Tonight, according to him, it is difficult to stumble upon something curious. And when he, Tang Ning, came, all the fun abruptly ended. He asked if Ma Dong had any problems with him. Ma Dong, as if frightened, abruptly began to wave away and say that everything was wrong. Tang Ning misunderstood everything. Ma Dong could not help but admire the young master, so how could he have problems with him? He also said that they just made a bet. At that time, Kun Rui advised the president to think again about whether it was really necessary to make this bet with Ma Dong. He replied that it was, of course, necessary. He put his hands in his pockets and suddenly asked where his card was. Suddenly Fan Yaoxu turned to Yan Mu. She called out to him, advised him not to disgrace himself here and leave soon. At the same time, he was looking for his bank card in his pockets. It seemed to her that the fact that Yan Mu got rich was just a joke. Besides Ma Dong stopped him at the entrance. Ma Dong himself soon appeared next to her. He told her that a loser like Yan Mu, who only brags, cannot be relied on. Everything has reached such an extent that he also refuses to accept defeat. He told Yan Mu to stop pretending that he had money, advised him to leave, and then he would not be disgraced. Yan Mu, his eyes flashing, looked at his bank card, which he finally found. The guy told Mr. Zhang that being a person is the same as doing business. Honesty is the most important thing. He, holding a card in his hand, said that he had money on this card. And if Zhang Peng Yu agreed that Yan Mu would invest in his business, then the money could be transferred right now. Zhang Peng Yu was incredibly happy. He, of course, agreed to cooperate. So he asked Yan Mu to wait while he took out the terminal. Zhang Peng thought that this young man was dressed quite simply, but his decisions are firm and reliable, therefore he deserves trust. Ma Dong, enraged, snatched Yan Mu's bank card, saying that he was completely overplayed. The man lifted the selected object up and addressed everyone who was watching this performance. He said that a person who has 15 million in his account uses a regular bank card. It seemed like an absolute scam. People agreed with his words. Everything is true, because if there were tens of millions on the card, he would have become a VIP customer of the bank long ago. Why does he use a regular card? 
These arguments seemed logical to everyone. Yanmu snatched his card from this man and said that to find out if there was money on it, you need to swipe it through the terminal. Zhang Pengyao had already taken out the terminal and was ready to hand it to the president. Yanmu swiped the card, but a message appeared on the terminal screen that there were not enough funds in the account. Therefore the payment was rejected. Ma Dong was bursting into laughter. He said that Yan Mu can once again say that he has 15 million, and also added that he admires his acting skills. Yan Mu did not understand why there were not enough funds on his card. Kun Rui anxiously asked the president what they would do now. Zhang Peng Yu put his hand to his head, allowing the thought that this man was not serious, but only making fun of him. However, judging by his words, you can't say that he looks like a cheater. Ma Dong said that he was not a reckless person, said that he would act for the sake of Mrs. Fan's decency. He told Yan Mu to just apologize to him and kneel down. Then everything would be forgotten immediately. Tang Ning told the young man that the most important thing was to be honest, to be ready to place bets and accept defeat. Ma Dong only nodded his head in agreement, as if confirming these words. Since Mr. Tang himself said so, Ma Dong especially cannot go against him. Ma Dong said that Mr. Tang should decide who is right. Kun Rui intervened. He said he thinks it's just a mistake, because they all know that the banking system can fail when large transfers occur. Kun Rui said that he had things to do and that he couldn't spend too much time here with them. He started shouting, asking where the guards were, and demanded to call her immediately. Yan Mu said that they will find out who won the bet when the bank employees come. And Ma Dong is in such a hurry because he is afraid that he will be embarrassed when everyone finds out that Yan Mu really has so much money on the card. Meanwhile, Kun Rui was already talking to someone on the phone. Ma Dong shouted that he was the president and that he wasn't afraid of some kid like him. The guards came running and asked Mr. Ma what had happened. He pointed his finger at Yan Mu and told the guards to surround him. He said he would give the guy one last chance, and if he didn't get down on his knees and admit his mistake, he would be beaten until he confessed. Yan Mu calmly replied that it was too early for that. Besides, he didn't lose to Ma Dong, so why should he kneel down? He thought it was Ma Dong himself who should be kneeling in front of him. It seems that this man really thought that Yan Mu could be intimidated so easily. Ma Dong said that Yan Mu is very stubborn, so he told the guards to pin him to the ground, force him to kneel and admit his mistake. Then Lai Bio suddenly appeared, who was ready to defend the president. He shouted that no one would dare to touch him. Lai Bio, looking around, thought that he could fight two people alone, but cope with five or six people. Suddenly someone called the guards losers. Something flew right in front of them with great speed. Even Lai Bio was surprised, mentally asking himself what it had just been. The guard who was hit was now crouched on the floor, and Yan Mu was standing next to him, who struck this blow. Ma Dong asked how this guy still has the courage to resist. According to Mr. Ma, Yan Mu is not capable of anything else except turning up his nose endlessly. Fan Yaoxu was shocked because she didn't know that Yan Mu could fight like that. When did he have time to learn it? Before Tang Ning could blink an eye, Yan Mu dealt with the guards. Appearance can be very deceptive. Everyone was asked to calm down and wait for Mr. Kun to call a specialist. Ma Dong began to be indignant. He still had things to do and the fact that a bank employee would come here would give absolutely nothing. Tang Ning insisted that Ma Dong wait here with everyone, because Yan Mu's loss would be recognized only when everything was reliably known. Ma Dong replied that he agreed to wait, since Mr. Tang asked for it, but he would kill Yan Mu if it turned out that he had been lying all this time. A man in a suit and with a laptop was standing at the table on which this laptop was standing. He was checking some data. The data showed that there are no funds on Yan Mu's bank card. Seeing this, the man turned to Yan Mu and asked if his funds on the card reached more than 50 million. Ma Dong contemptuously said that there was nothing on the map, so how could there be 50 million? Yan Mu confirmed the employee's information. He immediately explained that a bank card can be frozen if there are too many funds on it. According to the rules, it was simply required to unfreeze the account, and then the bank card service would be restored. Ma Dong did not believe that such a thing was even possible. Fan Yaoxu, who was standing next to him, was no less surprised. Yan Mu asked the employee if he could make a transfer right now. Ma Dong again began to resist, asking how much Kun Rui paid for this show, because he did not understand how this person could have 50 million from where. The employee handed Ma Dong his business card, saying that there was a phone and mail on it. He also said that he would give his work number, and then Ma Dong could call and ask if he had doubts. After that, Yan Mu was handed his bank card, informing him that it had been unfrozen, and also said that when he had free time, he could come to the bank and order his gold card. People started discussing what they had heard about the golden card. One said that he has a friend who is not poor at all, who also uses a gold card. Ma Dong raged again and started yelling that all this was not fair at all and that if Yan Mu did not invest in Xin Yun right now, then the dispute would be lost to them. Holding his unfrozen card in his hands, Yan Mu noticed that Ma Dong still could not calm down. Yan Mu swiped his bank card through the terminal again, 
and this time the money transfer to Zhang Peng Yu's account was successful. Kun Rui asked Ma Dong if he had anything else to say about this. The frustrated Ma Dong still couldn't believe what had happened. He said that they just wanted to humiliate him, that they cheated. He also added that he could not kneel, because real men do not do that, real men do not kneel. However, after that, someone kicked Ma Dong on the leg, causing him to yelp in pain. He fell, turning to look at Tang Ning, who was standing behind him. Ma Dong asked what Tang Ning was doing. Tang Ning said that Ma Dong had lost. He should be able to admit his mistakes. Young Master Tang put his foot on Ma Dong's back and told him to do as he had been persuaded earlier and asked him not to waste his time. Ma Dong, who had already knelt down in front of Yan Mu, called himself a blind dog who did not see who was in front of her. He told President Yan that he shouldn't have contacted him and then began to apologize. Yan Mu asked if Ma Dong had forgotten anything. He said that he had not forgotten anything. He asked for forgiveness on his knees and made three slaps in the face. Everything is as it was said. Looking back at Kun Ru, that table behind, Yan Mu asked the kneeling man, what about the truth about the food company? Did Ma Dong decide to put all the blame on Mr. Kun? An enthusiastic Kun Rui thanked President Yan. Ma Dong, feeling ashamed, began to tell that the food was bought, so he envied Mr. Kun's luck, which is why he was talking nonsense. After this confession, all the people gathered here began to understand how it really was. Everyone present decided that Ma Dong was a real liar, and whoever dealt with him would fall into a deep hole. Embittered and humiliated, Ma Dong left this place, but his thoughts were again Yan Mu, who had disgraced him. Mr. Ma thought that he would never forget this and would definitely avenge such humiliation. Zhang Peng Yu thanked President Yan for investing such money in their Xingyun Corporation. He promised that the corporation would not let him down. Yan Mu, in turn, thanked Mr. Tang for everything and told him to contact him if something was needed. Fan Yaksu stood to the side and looked at Yan Mu. She had already realized that he had really become rich, and she thought that she would not be standing here now if it were not for the refusal of this man. She began to remember sitting on the sofa with her mother and brother, and her mother asked her if she remembered the Mr. Ma whom Aunt Wang had introduced her to. The mother asked Fang Yaoxu to meet him. The brother added that he had heard that there would be an investment meeting at the hotel today, and Mr. Ma would also be there, so Fang Yaoxu would go there with this man. Fan Yaoxu herself protested. She said that she did not want to go there. But her father, crossing his arms over his chest, asked with displeasure if she decided something on her own in this case. He said that there was no hope for Yan Mu anymore, because they needed a new son-in-law, otherwise why did they raise her at all? The mother, covering her eye with a handkerchief, began to press on pity. No one forces Fan Yaoxu. But if Xiao Yu can't get married because he has no money, then their family will starve to death. Is this really what Fan Yaoxu wants? Her mother said that it is very difficult to raise two children. Fan Yaoxu turned around to leave. At this time, Tang Ning was telling Yan Mu that they were probably brought together by fate itself. He also told the president that he could contact him in the future if he suddenly needed something. A message came from the system. She was congratulating me on completing the task. He was also awarded 10 life points and additional bonus points. It was reported that due to the success of the carrier, from now on 10% of the number of life points earned by the host will be extracted by the system in order to increase the level. Yan Mu now had 23 life points. Yan Mu was surprised, thinking about what this meant. Does the system not only manage his life, but also charge him a commission for it? Worried, Lai Bio informed Yan Mu and Kun Rui that things were very bad, as the workers were on strike again. Kun Rui was very surprised by such news. Why are the workers on strike again if they have been paid all their wages? Lai Bio said that the money was indeed paid, but these insatiable bastards are now gathered at the entrance to the company, and they are dissatisfied with the fact that the company is on the hands. Kun Rui addressed the president, saying that the new program is not coming soon. They can't just support workers. Yan Mu thought about it. He offered to go back to the company and see what was going on there at all. Yan Mu said goodbye to Mr. Tang and Mr. Zhang and said he had to go. Soon they arrived at the building of the food real estate company. Here there was a struggle with the ungrateful workers, who had already been paid everything, but they still rebelled. The workers were dissatisfied. They said they wanted to see Mr. Kun. Their wages were really paid, but there was still no work. What should they do in this case? Are they going to be fired? The people who worked for Kun could not cope with such an onslaught at all. As a result, one was knocked to the ground, he fell and hit. After that, he got to his feet, but he was already very angry. He had a knife in his hand, he said not to be pushed, and threatened that he would kill the person who did it. The threats were not idle talk. This guy stuck a knife in a worker, others asked to call an ambulance as soon as possible. By this time, Yan Mu and Kun Rui had already arrived at the company building. They were wondering what kind of noise there was. Lai Bio tried to disperse the crowd by announcing that President Yan and Mr. Kun had returned. A blonde man with a bloody knife shouted to the workers that they had been paid, but they were still here. 
He made it clear to them that if they didn't disperse, he wouldn't let them get into the building anyway. The brother of this guy agreed with everything that was said and added that if the workers did not want to be beaten, they should leave immediately before it was too late and especially not block Mr. Kun's path. The worker who was stabbed was bleeding, but still standing on his feet. He was writhing in pain and holding onto a knife wound. Another worker was standing next to him who helped him and did the same. Finally, everyone realized that Mr. Kun had returned. He was shocked when he saw what was happening here and, looking at the injured worker, asked who did it. The two brothers told Mr. Kun that they were defending his authority. They also said that they just need to pay the injured worker 10,000, and after that the case will be resolved. Yan Mu asked if they had called an ambulance. A man from among the workers replied that they had been called, but an ambulance would arrive only in 10 minutes, and the wounded man was bleeding heavily, so he would not be able to hold out until then. The man sat down on the ground, clutching his head. He said that when the project was stopped, many of them were left without means of livelihood, and his own daughter fell ill. The doctor told him that she needed a small operation, but how could he pay for it if he was out of work? Yan Mu frowned, for some reason remembering his father at that moment. The crowd said that some workers left to find another job, but many stayed here because it's not so easy to find a job now. The worker who helped the wounded man has now reported that he is not breathing. The ambulance took too long, which did not play into their hands. Lai Bio asked Mr. Kun what they would do. He viciously said that first you need to tie up those two bastards. Bio walked towards the two guys. One said that thanks to them, no one would dare to cause trouble here anymore. And the other asked Lai Bio if they had done something wrong, stretching his neck and fists. Lai Bio asked these guys how dare they do such a thing here after Mr. Kun took them into his service. Yan Mu at this time was sitting near a worker who was in a very bad condition. Yan Mu checked and concluded that there was no breathing. The system notified that the worker was still breathing, but he was hopeless and his death was imminent. Yan Mu decided that since the system controls his life, it probably has access to other people's lives too, so it must have a way to save someone else's life. Yan Mu turned to the system, asking if there was a way to save this man's life, and said that this worker could not die here. The system announced that when it is updated, resurrection drugs will appear in the system store, which can be exchanged for life points. Yan Mu went to look at the system store. The system window now displayed this store, many items in which were still blocked. The only three abilities available in this store are strength, agility and endurance, and in a situation with a dying person, they are simply useless. Yan Mu asked the system if there was any other way to save this person's life. The answer did not take long to wait. Yan Mu learned that it was possible to spend life points to prolong this person's life, but only for a few minutes so that he could survive. In this case, the system calculated that the carrier would use up 12 life points. If the carrier is confident in his decision, he should have answered sure. There was a small remark. This function can only be used once, so it was not worth rushing to make a decision. However, Yan Mu replied without hesitation that he was sure. The guy wondered how he would be different from those two scum if he just watched another person die. Also, if this worker dies here, it will affect how new buildings will be built. Yan Mu's life points were deducted. He spent 12 life points to extend his life. Now he has 11 points left. The worker began to show signs of life. Another asked him to breathe, because help is already close. He must breathe, because an ambulance will arrive very soon. Lai Bio has successfully done his job. He informed Yan Mu and Kun Rui that the two pieces of shit were already connected. However, one of the guys said that they did all this only for the good of the company, because they can't do this to them. Yan Mu, who was now standing next to these guys, asked again about the good for the company. The bound blonde man, looking at Yan Mu, recognized him as the person they had already encountered and asked if it was him. The bound blonde, recognizing his old acquaintance in the area, smiled, deciding that he could not find the money and therefore came to beg Mr. Kun. Kun Rui asked Yan Mu what this guy was talking about, to which Yan Mu told Kun Rui to ask about it himself. Someone stepped on the bound man's foot. It was Lai Bio, who did not like the blonde's smile. He ordered him to tell what was the matter. The blonde immediately blurted out everything. His girlfriend's mom lost 500,000 to them in Mahjong and now owes them, and Yan Mu said he would pay by tomorrow. The brother of this guy confirmed everything, saying that even if this guy can't return the money, the girl is still very beautiful. She can be successfully sold on the black market for 1.8 million. Kun Rui got really angry. Do these guys really want to turn this company into a hangout or even want to bring him to his grave? Kun Rui turned to the president again, saying that he knew perfectly well what the situation of this company was. Ma Dong told them that he had found some way to make money and dragged them into it. And he, Kun Rui, could not do anything about it. However, he assured that he would never he wanted to harm people. Yan Mu, frowning, asked again. It really was Ma Dong. Kun Rui confirmed what was said and added that the company now belongs to Yan Mu and its debt has been fully repaid. Immediately, Yan Mu kicked the bound blonde with his foot. 
The workers who watched this said that these bound guys had been harassing the workers all the time, but now they got what they deserved. Karma had befallen them. The crowd also said that it was that young man who bought out the real estate company of Futa. The ambulance finally arrived. Two men came out with a stretcher. They asked everyone to make way. After that, the wounded worker was laid on a stretcher, declaring that he could still be saved, only to make a blood experience. They again asked to clear the road. Kun Rui was glad that everything was fine. He asked the president what his next actions would be. Yan Mu replied that first we need to try to calm down the workers. Kun Rui wanted to say something, but Yan Mu continued. They already have a ready-made team of workers, so the workforce is not a problem. The workers were excited. This was expected, because last time they were not paid wages for six months. Whether it would happen again if they did stay was what they were worried about. Yan Mu asked them to calm down and stop worry, as the company would conclude an employment contract with them that would guarantee monthly payments. Also, on behalf of the company, Yan Mu guaranteed them safety during working hours and bonuses at the end of the year. In a previous life, Yan Mu's father broke his leg at a construction site. Due to the lack of a contract and insurance, he lost his job and began to limp. One of the workers, delighted, said that he had heard that contracts are signed only with decent employees, and if the company does not fulfill the terms of the contract, then a fine is issued to it, and then the case is transferred to the public security department. Someone was reassured by this, because in this case the company will not be able to fool them. Lai Bio told Mr. Kun that this is the first time he has heard about signing a contract with ordinary workers. He believed that under such circumstances, the company would collapse sooner or later. However, Kun Rui replied that without this, the company would come to an end much faster. Lai Bio remarked that Yan Mu has money and talent, but one should not act so recklessly. One has only to look at which company he invested money in today. Now this is a contract with workers. Is this guy a friend of the head? The bodyguard, remembering the two guys, looked around, pointing at them and asking what to do with them now. Kun Rui told Bio to look at Director Yan, who is all business. It was necessary to preserve the reputation of the company. It was impossible for anyone to find out about this incident. Yan Mu said that there are still workers who were injured today. The company should cover their medical expenses and make sure that this does not happen again. Kun Rui promised the president to follow up on this and assured that there would be no problems. Yan Mu said that in that case he was leaving. Mr. Kun told Lai Bio to take President Yan home, but he said that it was not worth doing because he would get there on his own, putting his hand on the shoulder of his bodyguard. Kun Rui said that their president is a very purposeful guy, you just have to wait, he will show himself very soon. Both of them looked at Yan Mu leaving. Kun Rui was sure that Lai Bio would definitely change his mind about this man once he believed in him. Finally, Yan Mu returned to his home. Opening the door, he decided that his mother and father had already returned. However, a girl was waiting for him outside the door. Meng Yao, she saw him and immediately asked why he came back so late. Yan Mu, smiling, said that there were problems in the company that needed to be solved, which is why he was late. The girl said that she noticed that Yan Mu began to work twice as much. She asked if it was because he wanted to marry Yao Xu and get rich. The guy patted her on the head again, telling her not to talk such nonsense, and then added that tomorrow he would take her somewhere. He knew that Meng Yao's dream was to live in a big house. Now he will finally be able to fulfill this dream. Meng Yao asked where exactly and if her brother could tell her about it right now, but he replied that she would find out about everything only tomorrow. When he left, he said that it was already late, she needed to rest. The girl, looking at his back, seemed upset and thought that Yan Mu had not been himself for the past two days. It seemed that he had become a completely different person. 